Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus, joining you for another teaching and learning session. And this time around, before we get to start with our NCLEX RN pointers, number 19 for the new format, Next Generation NCLEX RN, let me just invite you to be part of our pool of thousands of passers around the world. And let's actually figure out how Ronald Allen Biggers, CAUSRN from Lorma Colleges in La Union, past the Northern Mariana Islands Board of Nursing, Next Generation NCLEX RN last July 3, 2023. And let me share his story. Ronald says, I never regret the day I decided to join the Ray Agapos review system. The magic three-day quick fix armed me with concepts and techniques to seat the NCLEX with confidence. What a testimonial. I sincerely applaud Sir Ray for making nursing concepts easier to understand through the Core Shell. Now, the Core Shell is a program, it's a technology that's being offered with the Ray Gapus system that will enable you to navigate through the NCLEX with standard multiple choice questions and next generation questions being focused on each of the activities. Okay, we'll talk more about the Core Shell in a while. And the TOP Q Bank. So, the Q bank is integrated into the core shell for the swak na swak na sample questions. Grabe, parang si Sir Ray gumawa ng exam ko. To all GAPOS mentors and very accommodating staff of RAGRS Manila and Baguio, who's been so responsive to my queries and needs, you are such a blessing from above. I want to share my success with you at sana marami pa kayong matulungan na maabot ang pangarap maging USRN. God bless you all. Ronald Alan B. Garcia, USRN. And so be like Ronald, be one among our thousands of passers around the world who experience the tools that are created by the Ray Gapo system. Now, the second important, the first rather important question that we need to address today would be, what are the things that you need to study? Of course, you need an expert opinion. And we shall begin with the things that I want you to remember for your test. And that is beginning with percutaneous ventricular assist device. As you can see, in a percutaneous ventricular assist device, you have a mechanical pump, okay, that is outside the body, okay? And this pump supports the heart. So that's in a nutshell how you should explain it to your patient. So the pump is actually outside the body, it's a mechanical pump, and it is the one that supports the heart in order to contract properly. So this device is indicated for patients with chronic heart failure and those who are waiting for heart transplant. Okay. You would also note that the control system is actually on the abdominal wall and the communication between the control system and the pump is through a catheter. So this is a catheter and the catheter could be either inserted um, on the neck the armpit or the leg, okay? Now, so what are the things that your patient should know about this? First and foremost, how should the percutaneous ventricular assist device affect activities of daily living, particularly uh, taking a shower? Of course, the patient can take a shower, but you have to tell them to ensure that the control system does not get wet. And the most important thing that you can tell your client is, they can actually engage in sex, okay? They can travel, they can go hiking, they can ride a bicycle, they can go biking. However, they should not engage in water sports or swimming as it will soak a control system. Now, since you have a connection from the outside of the body to the heart directly, the danger is when infection sets in. So remove anything that is wet that could potentially introduce bacteria into the access port because that could directly spread the infection into the heart and the circulatory system. So if the patient experiences fever that is above 38 degrees centigrade or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, suspect infection and that needs to be reported. Also, it's important to tell the patient to check the device every day to make sure that it's not going to malfunction. And then the patient should also be monitored for bleeding because the patient will be on a blood thinner. 
even if the patient is on a blood thinner, they still are at risk for developing stroke because of clots that could potentially form from any part of the percutaneous ventricular assist device. So once again, this device is for patients with chronic heart failure and those who are waiting for cardiac surgery. Okay, next, we have your oxybutynin, which is a medication that helps relax the muscles. So it would help decrease muscle spasm. Usually this is used as a form of treatment for patients with loss of bladder control. Now, one of the things that you have to note for patients taking oxybutynin would be your vital signs, specifically the heart rate. As this medication potentially would increase the heart rate, so this can potentially worsen your hyperthyroid patient. Okay, so the heart rate is very, very important for you to monitor. Now, what are the common side effects? The typical GI side effects could be diarrhea or constipation and then heartburn. Now, how would you know that you need to report uh, some symptoms that the patient might be experiencing when the symptoms may indicate overdose of the medication? And this would usually be CNS symptoms. So when you talk of CNS symptoms, you have central nervous system symptoms, you have confusion dizziness, hallucinations, that indicates overdose of the medication, plus flushing of the face, like Redman syndrome in a patient taking vancomycin, or the niacin flush in a patient is taking niacin, which is your vitamin D3, okay? And of course, you have your meconium aspiration syndrome. Now, this is common among full-term babies or post-term babies, this can be fatal, but most of those who have this eventually um, would fully recover. So how would you know that the baby is in danger of meconium aspiration? So there's usually brownish or greenish amniotic fluid. This is what we call meconium stain amniotic fluid, and there's going to be slow heart rate. So when the child is at risk for meconium aspiration syndrome, you have to refer the client immediately to the neonatal resuscitation team, which should be on standby. And then you would notice that the baby could be limp, okay? Um, there's bluish discoloration of the skin, and then usually the breathing could be irregular. So the two priorities for meconium aspiration syndrome would be suctioning, making sure that the upper airways are suctioned, the lower airways are not necessarily suctioned, not unless it's indicated or ordered by the physician because it could potentially um, stimulate the vagus nerve that could potentially decrease the heart rate. And the second priority would be oxygen. So in essence, you're ensuring a clear airway by suctioning the patient and then administering oxygen. Now, the second important thing that you have to know should be the NCLEX now requires you to navigate technology-based questions. So you have to know how to navigate those. And the best way to learn is through our learning tools at the Radiap system. You have NCLEX 311, which is the local title of the NCLEX RN in a flash that's available in Jones in Bartlett, USA. And of course, our state-of-the-art course shell, you can navigate through any of the course. This is very, very easy. If you may want to study infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care, okay, uh, pharmacological and parenteral therapies, physiological adaptation one, two, and three, reduction of risk potential, and of course, psychosocial integrity. This is your best bet for passing the NCLEX. And the most important thing, you have to be in a conducive environment that should keep you in focus when you're preparing for the NCLEX. So this is our NCLEX class, which is very, very intimate. And we have our own NCLEX simulation room and we have our own hall where a limited number of participants are allowed to join us at the time. So if you would want to join our NCLEX Next Generation NCLEX RN Flex program, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN, the fee starts at 3499 Give us a call. You have a choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons. You get the chance to have our course shell, the Q-Bank, three free books, and of course, my NGN strategies, plus the three days quick fix sessions that are conducted 
every month. So I'll see you in my next video and I'd love to see you join my quick fix session. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, saying be the next USRN with a functional concept a day that keeps your NCLEX RN fears away.